Hi, this is Tom, Junkie XL, and welcome to this tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, we're gonna um, uh, very elaborately look at Cubase 8 and how I built my template in there. Uh, we're just gonna go through a couple of things here. Um, first, I will do a general overview what my desk looks like and the, the ergonomics of it, like where everything is and how I use with these panels. Um, then we're gonna look you know, an overview at uh, Cubase 8 pretty quickly. We look at the arrangement window, we'll look at the mixer window, and then after that we'll get very much in depth in um, how we establish certain MIDI tracks with VSL connections to six computer servers. Um, and we're also looking at the VST returns uh, with the plugins on it. We will be looking at certain libraries that I use, um, certain libraries that I've made myself. We will look very extensively at the mixer page, the different windows I made in there, um, how all the audio will go out to uh, separate group tracks, um, how we record bass guitars and guitars or any type of audio and how we deal with that. And then we'll look finally at when everything is mixed, how we can um, offline bounce uh, 48 quad stems at the same time in almost no time. Um, so it's, it's a wonderful system. Um, so now let's go to how I've set this up here. Um, uh, first of all, um, well obviously I'm sitting in a chair, so that's the most important thing. And then we look at this keyboard, which is uh, a Dupfer LMK4 Plus keyboard. Um, it's a weighted keyboard, 88 keys, it's a lovely keyboard. Um, I, um, um, I have four studios in total that are identical and every room has the same keyboard, has the same setup on the desk and has the same Cubase 8 templates, including the six servers uh, connected to it. Now let's talk a little bit more. So the keyboard is right here, just underneath this glass uh, uh, table. And I have uh, a Mac keyboard and mouse, even though I'm working on a PC, but I was always so married to uh, the Mac keyboard, so I kept it. So it has a couple of really odd things, um, what control is doing and what command is doing. But besides that, it's pretty much the same as a PC keyboard. Uh, so now here on the left, um, we see the Fader Master, which is made by a company, Jill Cooper. Um, it's a very nice um, fader service with just eight faders. And I've got them standard assigned to mod wheel, expression, volume, CC16, controller 16. I'll get to that later. Uh, filter control. And then here we see close room surrounds. Now these three last faders will use extensively on the orchestral samples primarily where I can say I just want to hear the close mic recording of that instrument or I just want to be hearing the room of that instrument or the surrounds which would be the signal that comes from the from the back speakers. Um, this controller allows you to have different pages with different set of faders uh, and if we go up to a different program um, these controllers will not work as they do right now, but then they become synthesizer controllers. We all get to that later. Um, then we look to the left. Um, we have a couple of Boomstars uh, synthesizers set up here, which are analog synthesizers. So I have MIDI tracks in Cubase that actually go out of Cubase, that actually go to these Boomstar boxes, and then the audio out comes back into Cubase and I can record it in. Obviously, you can't store really presets because these are 100% analog um, uh, boxes. Um, also here on the desk, very important, two salt lamps. They come from Tibet and apparently they make your mind very zen and very um, relaxed. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I rarely feel really stressed, so I guess it works. Um, and then we have two screens here. On, on At this specific point, I'm doing the whole tutorial on one screen with a low resolution. And the reason why I do that is that you guys can better see at home what I'm doing. But in real life, I use two big screens for Cubase only, and I have a third screen that is Pro Tools only. And I work on a very high resolution, um, so I can overview my arrange window, my mixer window, or whatever windows I want to have open. Like I said, for this tutorial, um, I work on a low resolution and I can switch between the windows on one screen so it's better for you guys to see what I'm doing. 
Um, right in front of here, um, we have a touchscreen, which um, I did a separate tutorial on what we can do with the touchscreen. But it's sitting here. Um, and then here we have the two uh, controllers that are made by Steinberg itself. And I've got the AI controller and the channel controller. Um, these controllers give me options to talk directly into Cubase that is very hard to do with any other uh, touch service uh, program because they're made by Steinberg. So you can access certain parameters that you cannot do with key switches or with uh, touchscreens. Uh, very handy to have a few of them. Uh, right next to it, we see a speaker controller. Uh, actually, we see two. Um, one of them, the right one, is controlling my surround speakers, which is um, a pair of M audio speakers, and they really work well for that for that uh, purpose. I really like them. My front speakers um, and the sub and the center speaker is my favorite speaker set. It's the Den Audio Air 25. Um, I've had them for um, roughly 10 years, and I've got uh, a fully surround setup um, in my other studios and some stereo setups too. Um, very, very lovely speaker. Um, and the, 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 the volume controller of that um, sits right next to the uh, Cubase boxes. And then over here, Almost underneath the screen, we see um, a USB hub that distributes some of the USB things that go on on this desk. And underneath that, a very small uh, PC computer that runs this touchscreen that we see over here and that we did a, se a separate tutorial for. And then a little bit to the right, um, we see the Pod HD Pro. And I usually use that to stick in my bass or stick in my guitar uh, to record um, 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 live guitar and bass straight into Cubase if I have to use plugins in, in Cubase. Uh, I have multiple amps to record um, bass guitars and guitars, and I've got a few of them here behind me, a Fender Twin Reverb or an Orange. Um, we'll get to that also later in the, in the, in the tutorial. Now, now that I've just the, um, kind of laid out what my, uh, what my um, uh, desk is looking like, and let's now uh, focus on, on, on Cubase and just do a really quick overview um, what it looks like when you look at my arrangement window. So as you can see, a Cubase allows you to divide your arrangement window in two sets of tracks. And if we look at the top tracks, we have our marker track right here. Uh, we have our time signature track here, the tempo track here, a click track here, which is basically the groove agent one is inserted in a click track. Uh, so I use a MIDI clack, uh, a click as well as um, an, uh, an, an clack, a click generated by, by Cubase, which is an, an, an audio file that, that sounds like this. And they call that an NPC click. I, I love to listen to that type of click. And then we see three tracks here. Uh, one says dialogue, effects, and all mix. Uh, now, these are tracks that actually come from Pro Tools, where the picture usually is loaded in with the dialogue and the effects tracks and the music tracks. So Pro Tools slaves to Cubase. And that way, I offload the picture and its audio files to a different computer to save processing for other things that I want to do. So Pro Tools runs the picture, it slaves to Cubase, and on a big screen that we see over there, I usually look at the picture, and the audio of the dialogue and the effects and the, the demos that I made will come back in an input here in Cubase so I can listen to them and compare with what I'm doing at that point. Um, then the next two tracks we see Mac return and laptop return. Um, which is basically, I take the audio output of my Mac and just stick it into Cubase. If I do, if I use certain sound design programs or other wacky plugins, I don't really want to install on my Cubase rig. I do it on a separate computer. I can treat the audio and record it live into uh, my Cubase uh, sequence, and then I treat the audio until I'm happy with it. Laptop return could be something similar, but usually it's playing back the, the, um, um, the iTunes material, so if I'm scanning through some iTunes, I can just um, listen to stuff and I can compare you know, what, what, what I'm doing at that same point, if I want to play something I did earlier on, or if I just want to get inspired and you know, play some classical piece of music or a hip hop track or whatever, uh, very handy. Um, then we have the MIDI file track, uh, we'll get to that later. 
Um, and then I have also another iPad uh, input for the same reason I just discussed and another Mac input for the same reason and a signal generator track here um, which I use to denoise my system um, and um, there are many videos that you can find about that how that works but basically I have it set that if my uh, pink noise is minus 20 dB my separate channel outputs should measure 85 dB on a dB meter and then you know you're at the right um, calibrated system. Um, so let's just now pull this back up so we just see the markers, the signature and the tempo on the primary load uh, of uh, tracks on the top screen. So if I were to close these folders that I see right here, you basically see a few basic folders. Um, which is JXL Instruments, which is JXL Scoring, which is VST Instruments, Group Tracks, FX Channels and VCA Tracks. Um, now let's open these two folders that actually contain tracks in it. And if we just now scan through these tracks without getting too much into detail, because we will later on, um, you see there is a vast amount of tracks, so we're in the drum department at this point, orchestral effects, um, drums, the, the, the Mad Max drums that we did a separate tutorial on, how we made them and how you can program music with it. Um, we keep going, there's more and more drums, more and more drums, then we go into the world drums department, which is all instruments that I especially created for 300 Rise of an Empire, there's going to be a separate tutorial about that too. Um, we keep going down, we keep going down, more drums, more drums, there's a lot of drums. Uh, and then we get to um, a really interesting folder which is called uh, um, the Warner Brothers Metal Department. Um, and these are all kinds of metal instruments that we sampled uniquely for Mad Max. There's also a separate tutorial about that. Um, we go down and then we get to some piano sounds and then we get to the external synths here, what I, what I talked about earlier when we talked about the desk. So we see here the Boomstar uh, audio return and we see here the Boomstar um, uh, MIDI track. So that's how I talk to these boxes and they record back in. Now we get to the synthesizer department with the tracks. Now we get to more external synths, uh, the Zebra and the Diva. I'll talk about that later, how I did that. And here we go to the bass department, the sequence department, um, the live bass department. We see audio tracks for, to record live bass. We also get to that later. Then we get to the guitar department, um, more guitars, uh, also live acoustic guitars, live uh, electric guitars. We get to that later, how we record those. Um, then we get to the sound design department, which is um, a very, very, very uh, big departments uh, in this uh, in in this template. Um, we go through all these different sound design elements. These are all libraries that I created uniquely for certain projects or just to have them in general. Um, this will be an important part at some point in this tutorial. So at this point, I'm just going to scan through them. You see, it's an awful lot. We're talking hundreds of tracks here. Um, then we go to um, a folder that's called Meta. Meta means the program MetaSynth. It's made by some French guys and it's absolutely fantastic program. I do a lot of sound design with it and all the results of those will end up on these audio tracks. So we just keep going. I'll get to that later also. Now we get to the scoring department, which has it, its own folder and I call it scoring because it contains all the acoustic um, uh, instruments in there that we know from an orchestra or, or a soloist or so. Um, so here we're looking at some string ensembles and then we go to Spitfire solo strings, cinematic strings, then we go to East-West play strings, then we go to Berlin strings, then we go to a library from ATO that has the Basel Tower beautiful instrument, uh, then we go to Cage uh, string effects, then we go to LESS, um, and then here we go to the woods department, so we have Spitfire Low Woods, beautiful uh, library, um, BML, also Spitfire Winds, beautiful library, uh, ADL Winds, also very beautiful, uh, 
East-West Woods, a very old library actually, 12 years old or so, but still very effective. Um, and then we get to the brass. So here we have the Cinebrass uh, library with some East-West brass, more Cinebrass, some cage brass. And then at the very end, we have two choir libraries, uh, Venus and Mars and the Requiem Choir. So that pretty much rounds up very roughly an overview on these MIDI tracks and instrument tracks, but we'll get back to this later.